Hello everybody, welcome to my semi-final game against Inarian. Um So, looking at my team, we've got a Claw Pommer there with Tackle. Tackle Mighty Blow guy, Wrestle Tackle Frenzy guy. A couple of Claw Mighty Blow warriors, one with Panning on, one with Guard, not bad. A couple of other Guard, a couple of rookie, some Rookie Beasts, um, a Block guy, a couple of... Oh, I've got, obviously I started with a Ball Carrier off the pitch. I induced a Wizard and a Bribe, which you can't see here. Um, he had a 13-man team, one turner, very very good one turner. Movement nine, sidestep, sprint, show feet, um, wrestle, tackle, strip, fend, sidestep, war dancer, mighty blow, war dancer, some catches, an unbelievable blodge guard pro tree, grow uh, with grab crucially, and an agility like five thrower. So he had a pretty good team. Um, you know, I was like 300, 300 TV down, um, which, you know, sucks. That would have been like piling on on this guy, wouldn't it, for instance? Would have, was only 20 more TV, would have made my chance a lot better. 20 TV on him gets guard, which makes my chances loads better. Um, 20 TV for him gives him guard too. So for an extra 60 TV, I could have had three crucial skills for winning the game. So you know, I was I was an underdog, um, regardless of some people thinking that I wasn't an underdog. The game was at, at my my stadium um, negates riots and pitch invasions, but this match was at Inarian Stadium, as it happens. So yeah, I went for the deep defense so his tree couldn't blitz anybody or even base anybody unless he wanted to risk it. Because, you know, I, I know Inarian's going to score in two turns. I really don't care. Oh, yeah, a tackle on the a tackle on the Warrior would have been huge, actually. Yeah, a tackle on this panning on Warrior would have been amazing. So, yeah, for for what... So, for five skills, I could have had tackle, tackle, guard, guard, piling on. And that would have been 100 TV. It would have been unbelievable. I also bought a babe as well. I also bought a babe because I was that much TV down. And I thought I'd get out Bash because he's got Mighty Blow. You know, every blitz of his is with Mighty Blow, guaranteed, because he's got the Mighty Blow War Dancer. And he's going to get some Mighty Blow blocks from his tree as well. And I've only got Armour 8 for the most part. So I thought the chance of getting out Bash things is he's got, you know, so much blodge. It's going to be gonna have to make my hits count when I pile on so yeah you know I'm, there's no way I'm trying to defend him scoring I'm just gonna blitz people and that. obviously blocking him three dice into it to make a follow-up three dice from the warrior had I got the just got the push on for no effect. So I was just trying to protect my um, tacklers from getting blitz mostly. That's why I made absolutely zero attempt to um, to, to you know go out and screen because I just thought I don't want to blitz him, even though he's movement 8, so he obviously could, but um, so I put the guard next to him to make it a tiny bit harder. And I realised I just couldn't stop him blitzing him, because he's movement, he's movement 8, isn't he? He can blitz who he wants. Obviously, this was the bad thing about being the first semi, because I was fine sacrificing him, because I thought chances are I'm playing Muldripster in the final if I win. But um, had I had I had Shoney played his game, obviously I would have wanted to protect him more. But then I thought for this game, this guy's pretty worthless. GFI from Inari in there. Pointless GFI. This guy's in, just in scoring range. But instead, Inari in being a greedy and, in my opinion, very, very bad play this turn. He made that GFI. Could have cost him a reroll. And then um, does the pass and catch and makes another 2 plus roll that he doesn't need to make and hands it off to him. 
So, I mean, I guess he doesn't have to re-roll this, but if the ball goes in the crowd, he could have just lost. Crazy. Two, two pluses that he didn't need to make. Because he wanted to skill up the war dancer. That's pretty greedy, that, isn't it? In, in, in the semi-final. I thought it was pretty poor. Pretty poor. I mean, I think scoring in two turns voluntarily without any pressure on you is, is bad anyway. Um, well, bad. It's high risk, high reward, isn't it? Which I, I don't like. Just calling it outright bad is wrong. But it's, um, it's high risk, high reward, isn't it? Because now he's got more turns to turn me over. Um, but I've got more turns to just to, to actually get to the end zone, you know? If he had stalled it down to turn four or five, it's hard for me to actually get there in four turns. So, I don't know. I think it's a good... It's high risk, high reward. I don't like it. Calling it bad is, is false, isn't it? Because you, it's hard to say anything's bad in Blood Bowl. Obviously, that was, was you know, definitely bad doing those rolls for um, no reason. But but there was there was a payoff for him in the end. But, I mean, that was unarguably suboptimal play. But he did it to get the levels. Oh, yeah, I didn't have the... Um, didn't have the so, game sound up to max. Shit. Alright, so there's a riot. So, because this wasn't my stadium, got hit by a riot. Absolutely standard. So there you go. Inarian's kind of bad play of scoring in two turns is rewarded and turned into a three-turn score, which I was a bit disappointed about. And also, my my um, my kick goes out of bounds, bounces out of bounds, and gives him a touchback. It is perfect. It's perfect. Right in the right in the furthest back it could be. Okay, nearly as far back as it could be. And, you know, splits my team. I'd done this so that, you know, to try and defend against a blitz. This, the setup was stuck in defense against blitz. He could have only blitzed um, rookie beast men. And he could have only gone down the side. He couldn't have broken through in the center very easily um, on a blitz. But I thought, just that was huge, you know. Just that was huge. I thought... Not only have now I only got six turns to score instead of seven, it's also right in my fucking end zone, maybe. Pretty unlucky. Made some three Ds. Deliberately not not putting my tackle Pommer on the line because I want to defend against, you know, if he... If it was a short kick or whatever and he based the cage, I, I just... Or got a blitz. I wanted these guys to be able to react. More chance of putting down... You know, if he puts a blood stepper in somewhere, I've got the Rackle frenzy to deal with a sidestepper or obviously the tackle pommer just to kill him but then I realised I'd fucked up and this guy was blitzable so he just had to run away <laughs> but yeah, made that Thank God made the 8 out of 9 pick up. Yeah, I guess I'll do a no new video for YouTube. Ah, I can't be bothered though. This will have to be a YouTube video. As, as bad as it is, starting with no game sounds and everything. So at least he at least he blitzed a low value player, and and he got the chain into the tree, which was something that I I shouldn't have given up. I realised after he did that was like that was a bit stupid of me, but he, his tree rooted and failed the pro, so I was pretty happy about that. I mean, look how hard it is because you know even though he's rooted the tree completely, you know, is a complete linchpin, isn't he? In the centre, it means that I just can't reverse out. So, like, it was just hard, man. It was really hard. Blitz with Mighty Blow, because I thought I wanted to keep my piling on guy protected. And I thought I needed players standing up to obviously make forward progress. With not having many... Not having many turns to score. Thanks for the perfect kick and the riot. <laughs> 
So yeah, he was the um, he was like the the Venger the Venger bus cage, if you like. This guy could be here, but um, the idea is maybe I should have kept him basing him and then just made the cage one square across. But I didn't want to make it. You know, I wanted to make it his choice to base me. Um, yeah, you know, you've got this. So if they leap in, it's a it's two dice your pick. If he leaps in from here. He could have leaped to here, but I mean, he couldn't. It would have been hard, wouldn't it? No. Here is the only way it wouldn't be, and there was a guard there. Yeah. So I was talking bullshit there. When you've when you've got a when you've got a Venger bus cage, if they blitz from any of these five squares, you've got an assist in already. So that's why the guard was where he was, so that he couldn't come in the back way. Put a sidestep, and had a few options to deal with it. Obviously, claw palm, or um. Or Mighty Blow or Rackle Frenzy. Looking back, and maybe I should have tried to um, go into this area. Keep my options open. But I didn't, because I had a cage here already. I just thought, I'll just try to get into that. But maybe what I should have done was... Made this block first and then um, tried to you know come around into here would have been a lot better actually thinking about it but then I, you know I wanted to get away from the tree so you obviously pushed him in there for the extra block and I didn't want to make a one in nine block you know with, with the ball being under pressure so um yeah, maybe I should could have blocked him to there and then just had a cage around here. It could have been possible. Because I'm really limiting my options of going down the sideline. With him having the ultimate, the ultimate anchor. Give up a block on armor 9. Get knocked the fuck out. Literally getting out bashed by Woody's. Like like I knew I would. Not even with Mighty Blow that time. Oof, made his dodge. So obviously I'm aware that this is the one turning threat. So I I think it would have been a better blitz to blitz somebody else, positionally. <laughs> Could have surfed this guy, you know, easily. But I was like, I just want to kill this guy. So, you know, probably this was the better play to surf him. But I was like, I absolutely have to kill this, this one turn guy to, if I want to win the game. So that's why I blitzed him three dice with Mighty Blow. Piling on. To a big fat nothing. So yeah, maybe that should have just served him. But I kept the uh, kept the Venger bus going. Didn't make any forward progress. Whereas if I'd served him, you know, I probably might have got out counter surfed or something. But could have jammed everybody and got a little bit further forward. But I, I was okay with this. It's just it's turn seven, you know. Like that's the thing for me. I've only got two turns to score from here, so it's going to be GFIs and hard to protect, and easy for him to counter score potentially. So it's still pretty scary. Yeah, he puts that catcher in the way there. Um, no, lineman. But it's, it's one less scoring threat, isn't it? So, this was the big choice on this turn here. Right, so. This is the big choice, right? I could have just blocked him first, because he really is only scoring threat. 
Um, well, he could probably score as well, couldn't he? 8, 9, 10, 11. He could score as well, okay. But he's the main scoring threat at this point. Um, so, yeah, he's got a sidestep here, keeping this tight. And he's got his tree there, keeping that tight. I could try to go down the sideline. I thought about going down the sideline there. Um, it was possible. Um, but what I ended up doing was using my bolt to clear him and getting a nice little KO. Finally, after all the mighty blow hits, something something worked. And then blitzed him. Because I thought it's now or never, you know. I thought if I don't score on this drive, I'm just going to lose or draw. And then it's 50-50. So I was like, I've got, I've got to push for the score here. I did think about not pushing for it, but I, then I, you know, after thinking about it, I thought I, I decided that I had to push for it. I, I gave up this block because I knew he'd have, I knew he didn't have to take it, but I knew he'd want to take the two dice with Mighty Blow on this guy. So um, I thought I'll do that just to make things a bit tricky and had to GFI, and then I was committed to like making a few GFIs. Failed the second one, which made the rest of them terrifying. So I had to do like a bit of a safe move. He didn't really do a whole lot standing there, but I thought it's better than not having anybody standing there. This was just fishing for a Kaz and also putting a tackle zone on him. You never know, he could one in 36 the dodge. And then I had to make two GFIs without a reroll. And then another two. So I mean I had, I had to make six GFIs. <laughs> and I did have a reroll, so it it was it was obviously a touch lucky. But um it, it ended up being very lucky after making those and then made that extra block and cast him which was very very lucky that was very nice indeed I did think about just fouling the one turner rather than making that block but then I thought you know I don't want to leave him the threat I thought it was better to do that thank you for the follow Spicosaurus or Spicosaurus whatever it is so yeah I, fi I figure now you know, okay, he makes the leap so I don't give away that block. Um, and he rolled the both down, then we rolled into a skull, which I couldn't change the angle there on the replay. That's good, isn't it? Oh, because I was pressing the wrong button. Right, so there you go. So, um, obviously, I'm just going to try and make a block off. Oh, you know, this, is, this was so bad, right? I'm in a GFI position. And I just didn't even think, I thought this guy's going to block this guy. But I could have just moved that bloke there, that bloke there, blitzed him, and then got the got the push with a power. I was just trying to, I just don't know, I guess I lost it a bit here. I made another crap play on turn 16. That was, that was really stupid. There was no excuse for that. I could have absolutely just got the, I didn't want to rely on the push. So I was thinking about pushing him one way and then pushing him another way, rather than... Um, you know, realising that I could have just hit him with him. So I really fucked up that turn. Um, leaving myself a GFI to score was inexcusable, really. But the claw pump piled on and got a KO, which I can't argue about. So yeah, I had to make a GFI. So that, that was that was really bad play by me. I should have, shouldn't have had to have made the GFI there. So 1-1 one, one at half time, as you would expect kind of thing. That's the thing, isn't it? Against With two good players, if if somebody scores in in two turns, you would expect it to be 1-1, one, one, wouldn't you? That's why it is the 2-1 guy. My, uh, my KO doesn't come back in a 3+. plus. I was a little bit salty, but obviously huge that the war dancer hadn't come back. So getting pretty good value from the wizard there, keeping him out for the whole half. And now I've got a full 8 turns to do my drive. So now, obviously, I'm really confident at this point. Um, having a whole eight turns, pick it up with a sure hands guy, get some good hits in potentially, feeling pretty good about myself, pretty good about my chances at this point, looking for a 2-1 grind, try and hit the movement guy if I can. He obviously protected him there, knowing it's his most important player. So yeah, again, I set up a little bit against. You know, if if he gets if he gets the blitz, to try and stop it through the middle, 
but instead he gets the pitch invasion because it's not at my stadium. My stadium would have prevented the riot and the pitch invasion, but because we're in Aryan Stadium, both happened in the same match, and it was pretty big. So as you can see, four of my guys go down, and how many of his go down? One, two, three, four of his as well. So it's actually an even pitch invasion. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven players each now. So we've got seven players each, except one of his is fucking strength seven, no, strength six, and the rest of his are all agility four and stuff, and I'm like, oh my god, what do I even do? In retrospect, what I should have done was I should have pulled back with him and maybe just gone for the handoff on turn one. This guy could have come back here, he could have been in a cage corner, and just gone straight for the handoff to get away from the tree. Um, but instead, I made probably a bad move overall. Looking at it now, I'm like, why didn't I just come back and go for the handoff straight away into the tackle guy? I just really don't know. I thought about trying to blitz the ward answer or fouling him. Originally, I wanted to foul him. That was that was actually my plan was to foul him because I've got the bribe, right? So I used my blitz here thinking if I knock him over, I'll be become the cage corner and then go and foul him. That was my plan. He was, he was going to blitz there, get the push, come back here, then he goes and fouls the one-turner. That was actually my plan, but it was a bit stupid. I should have just... I should have planned to go back and hand off to the tackle guy. Um... And now, of course, I'm just right next to a tree, which is just ridiculous. Like, you know, I laugh about people who try to base the ball sometimes, but obviously basing the ball with a with a tree man, um, <laughs> Blodge Stand Firm Strength Six, is a pretty is a pretty good guy to base the ball with, isn't he? Um, no way I'm going to be able to free the, free the ball carrier at all with with a block. So I was de I was guaranteed to have to dodge this turn. So that was really really bad by me. I should have absolutely just gone back. I had, I had eight turns. There was no reason to not go for the handoff to the uh, tackle guy. So obviously, yeah, he's just going to base with everybody, isn't he? Well, only seven players. Maybe he should have based with somebody else with this this guy hanging back. And um, so now, I'm, I, you know, I know that I'm going to have to dodge. Maybe I should have gone for the handoff this turn, but you know, I don't. I'm thinking with movement four, I don't really want to hand off. Huge, huge no knockdown on three dice with, with piling on, which was a bit of a pain in the ass. So yeah, I'm thinking I don't want to have to hand it off if I don't want to hand it off if I don't have to, you know. I thought if I'd got a removal there, then I would have handed it off. See, if I was building a cage here, as you can see. Um, if if you imagine that this guy was pushed to here and then killed. Um, <laughs> then this warrior could have gone here and handed off to the sure hands guy and then I'd have been protected against strip even though he didn't have a strip but you know, that that was my plan was to hand it off to him seeing as he's like the block ball carrier kind of guy um, I probably, for oh no I didn't forget about this guy it was, it was red dice all around because he was surrounded so I just had to leave him there to get punched. And had to leave that guy. I was kind of surprised in Arian re that because I thought, you know, maybe he should have done his save moves first. If he'd done save moves first, he couldn't he couldn't didn't have to re-roll it. But um I thought with overtime looking a possibility, maybe he didn't have to re-roll that. But I guess he really wanted to get Mighty Blow on my Clawpom guy, who again should have been should have been down on the ground anyway, because I should have got a power right from these three dice. But luckily, he doesn't get knocked over by the Mighty Blow guy. And he makes a GFI with no reroll. And another two GFIs with no reroll to be able to two dice the killer. Gets the pow. And gets the stun. So I'm thinking I'm really unlucky out of this exchange right now. But he has left open this side. So I instant go for the insta blitz with the um, mighty blow guy. Mighty blow tackle. So then now, now I'm committed to the handoff now because I think, you know, one, two, three, four. GFI to hand off to him because I thought he's given us quite a lot of space up here. 
and I thought obviously if his tree roots um, oh no no I was just, just going to base the tree obviously with this useless claw palm who just can't even do anything he's just a block warrior this game really effectively because he's always going to get based by dodge guys so yeah I had a GFI to hand off and I, sh I should have done it earlier Randomly got a power there, but sadly didn't hurt him. I was thought about fouling him. I did think about fouling him again because I had the bribe. But um, I just went, I thought, more guys forward is going to be better, isn't it? And then I ate the double down there because I thought, you know, I'm going to need these rerolls for overtime. Um, yeah. So we're kind of in the same position as we were in the first half of um, of the tree being in the middle and having to be being committed to one side. But yeah, I, I'm looking back. I'm really sad that I didn't just drop back and hand off. I'll turn one. in the mighty blow hit but again the the unskilled guy was eating it for me so of course I really want to blitz with a tackle comma um, and this this setup let me do it if I got the knockdown here obviously one in nine had to do it um, and I got a really lucky uh, really lucky KO it was pretty huge it gave me the space in the middle there um, it would have been pretty tough if that hadn't been an armor break. But, oh no, it wouldn't have mattered actually. If it wasn't, a, wasn't an armor break, it wouldn't have mattered too much. But, it was really nice that it wasn't. I fucked up a bit here. Um, I thought about fouling him first, because I've still got the bribe, right? I'm thinking I could foul him there before I move the guy. And then I was like, do you know what? That's too risky, because what if I get sent up? You know, less chance to break armor and also get sent off. So I'm meant to move him first, then the ball carrier. But I moved the ball carrier first like an idiot. And I was like, shit. What I was going to do, I was going to hope for a knockdown here and then go for the foul with the other beast man. Um, so I make the blitz, don't get the knockdown. So now I don't want to GFI with him to get the foul in. So he just has to run. And yeah, so I've got to make a GFI to get the foul off now. Without a reroll, pretty scary. But make the roll. And get the stun. I don't know if I use my. I think no, I've still got a bribe at this point. I think I wasn't caught. Obviously, just had to leave these guys here to um, take up actions. So I haven't got many guys out in front, have I? And then he rolls a double one. Um, which obviously let me get up quite quite far ahead. I was about to come under massive pressure. But that lets us move everybody up quite well. This was huge though, this. I make this 2D here and greed re-roll it. Um, just because, you know, I think I need him down to progress forward. Whereas really, I probably didn't. I probably should have just moved this guy in. Um, and then blocked him. And then I could have got forward without having to have the knockdown there. But obviously I get to foul him, don't I? Which is good. Because I've still got the bribe. So it was, it was. I thought it was kind of worth it. And did get caught on the bribe, but used the bribe was successful. And now, obviously, he's um, he's down to uh, no war dancers on the pitch. Looking pretty good. He's got the agility five that can dodge into any cage, but you know, not a lot I can do about that. If you want, if you can one dice me if he wants. Double score, obviously. I'd already used my reroll, so I didn't even have the chance to. I would have, I would have eaten it though. Um, 
even if I could have re-rolled it, I wouldn't have done. So we've got a nice cage, but again, he's just got he's just so much more movement than me. He's isolating these guys, and then he can just dodge out on two pluses. So you do kind of get outnumbered against elves, don't you? Outnumbered at the point of attack, as it were. At this point, he's got nine players on the pitch, and I've got ten. It's only a one-man advantage anyway. Which isn't a lot when you think how, how rowdy my team is with Mighty Blow and Tackle. So you know he does basing the ball right, doesn't he? he? Not only does he base the ball, he bases all the cage corners as well. But even then, it wasn't that good. I didn't think. I just get to bang them all down, don't I? Strength two, tackle, mighty blow. Pretty big armor break here because I really wanted him to be armor broken. To uh, <laughs> to you know to be able to not stand next to him. So that that was a pretty lucky armor break. I was going to stand there, then realised I would have had to have GFI'd with a beast man. To go in front. So he can kind of expose me here, can't he? This is a, like if he gets in assists. But then I looked around and realised he just didn't have the players to do it. And I thought I should have followed here to obviously make him after all a 2 plus to move him. But then I thought I liked where he was, but I probably should have followed there. Made a huge 3 plus there, which almost shut down this idea of one dicing this guy out. And then failed that dodge. But I mean, I was okay. I wasn't going to re-roll either of those. But that was a nice dodge to me. Because without that dodge, you could have easily one-diced him, couldn't he? And if he gets a pow, get in for a 2D on the ball. Which makes it a lot harder to do it. Tree roots, but pros it off. Pro being pretty big for the tree this match, to be honest. Not sure he should have blocked the warrior here, um, seeing as he's already based by the tree. Don't know if he did or not. I uh, know he didn't, but he, he double won the dodge. Or just won the dodge. Double won the dodge out. So he, I think he made the right play. But um, maybe he's going to go into the ball, actually. Maybe he's going to go for the ball. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I guess he was going to 1D the ball there. Again, no knockdown with Tom. No knockdown <laughs> against a rookie. Kind of annoying. Have to make a weaker sc weaker screen just to stop him running around if I fail the GFI. So yeah, so I made it like a weaker screen, and then I thought. I'll dodge him out at the end. You know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, GFI. So there's like three two pluses, whereas if I made it a tight, it would have been really easy with him around. So random, random. I still wanted to make that block, though, obviously, to try and kill this fucking one turner. So it wasn't completely random. And then, yeah, I made that three plus, which I wasn't going to re roll, because I thought, you know, it might go to overtime. No, maybe I would have re-rolled it. But obviously I really wanted to have a re-roll on the last turn, because he can easy he can easy one dice the ball and pal me. With his agility five, it's too easy, isn't it? Too easy for the agility five just to dodge in and pal me. He went in a different way rather than just coming in the back way, I guess. Which I just think is bad actually. He should have come in the back and then pushed to here. I guess he, he thinks if it pushes me away from the end zone, but I would, he's got more of a chance of recovery pushing him the other way. Um did he use a re-roll there? Yeah, he did re-roll the block, um, I think. Can't really see. And I didn't like that he made the second block there. I, I think he should have come up here to make it harder for me. But um, he didn't. So 
So like he's basically done nothing with all these moves um, towards the end there. Maybe it was hard for him to do anything, to be honest. This is a 2D needing a push. And then a 3D on this guy. Needing a push. And there you go, 2 1 grind. Absolutely standard. <laughs> and then it was at this point <laughs> um, that I realised he had a one turn. No, I, I, all the game I'd been trying to hit the one turn as much as possible, even to the point of not surfing somebody, just so I could hit the one turner. Um, but you know, I just I realised at this point that I hadn't worked out what I could do to stop him. You know, he's got he's got his grab tree. And I just hadn't thought how I can stop this one turn, and that's what I should have done before the match, you know. If maybe if it had been for um, for 500 euros, um, like next season, maybe I would have had to work it out. But I just didn't think how to stop this fucking grab tree. Um, I put the guard on the line eventually, so he couldn't get three dice on him. But it's just so easy to just grab him and then get the push, isn't it? So I should have I should have worked out that he was going to grab him and get the push over to here. I hit around here, so maybe I should have put more stuff over this side rather than these guys over there. It was hard though. I, I was going to put them together, but then I realised if I put them together, he can just because he's because he can block and grab. If I put them together like this, he could just put two guys in and then chain chain away the tackle and stuff. So it's just really hard. It was really hard to work out how to do. Maybe I should have just backlined it. I think I maybe he's just backlining because I really couldn't stop him getting the push, the one push that he needed. Um, well, apart from bad luck, so I probably should just backlined it. Is what I think. Looking back, I think I probably should just backlined it. You know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, because I did have eleven players still. I guess this guy should have been on the bench in case of a thrown rock, <laughs> for what it's worth, and maybe had a. Warrior there actually sings he's going to get blitzed. This block what guy should have been over here to make it harder to blitz him, blitz him off. But yeah, a back, back line is it should have been the play. Thank God no um no no touch back. So he had to roll some dice. He rolls the pow, then makes the pro to get the push. So that was that was pretty lucky for him. So he gets he gets the initial two dice. So the the guard was good. Um, and then the power doesn't matter because he just needs one push. Because he's fucking movement nine, isn't he? Disgusting. And yeah, even if this is, see if this had been um, maybe it would have been better to have them behind. I don't know. And then he makes the three plus pass and the two plus catch. He fails the tackle, so he's got to use his last reroll. Um, and then he makes all three GFIs. So it's pretty annoying. Pretty annoying to give up that. But still, 50 50 to probably win. <laughs> um, only one more dancer comes back. In the normal KO rolls. But then, of course, um, Cyanide doesn't work properly, so gave him a second KO roll, so he got the other war dancer back. And he won the coin toss, so I'm like, great, I've just lost. So I said GT to him at this point, I wasn't even BMing. I mean, there's just essentially no way I can stop him barring bad dice. The very sunny, I guess, made a little bit of a difference for me. Um, but yeah. Yeah, I probably should have backlined it. Would have been the play, I reckon. And then here, I think I made a misplay here, actually, at the time. I thought I made a misplay. Um, but you'll see. 
Oh, yeah, it was a Jaleed 5 pass, so it's still a 2 plus, yeah. Well spotted. That man in chat. Yeah, so it's still a 2 plus pass. Ah, well. But still, it's still a two plus pass. But yeah, I guess there's a chance of the there's a chance of the sunny having an effect, even with agility five, isn't there? There's a chance of the, there's a chance of it having an effect. But yeah, obviously, kicking against elves who can score at any time, there's no way they're not going to score, is there? And he got the nice weather anyway. Quite a, in a way a good kick, but again, it's no real, no real issue for Inarian, is it? Hiding a guy behind the tree there, as as is usual for him. Gets the card, so at this point he's actually outbashing me, which is funny. I've got ten players, he's still got eleven. After choosing to not bring on his war dancer because he didn't he didn't see him. I should have um I should have I should have mentioned that in chat to him to try and tilt him, but I didn't. So he moves this guy one over, so I know he wants to score on him as like his, his main outlet. Um, obviously no re-rolls. Um, I should you know I wanted to play pretty safe. Make him roll dice if I can. Your hands. Good job he's picked a good skill there. Um, so yeah, obviously straight away I'm in for the blitz on this guy. Just because I think it is his main. I think that's who he wants to score. You know, he wants to have the re-roll on the catch, doesn't he? He wants to have the the skill re-roll on the catch. Um, maybe I should just followed up and left him on him. But I wanted to kind of, you know, surround everybody to make it hard for him to score. So yeah, I try to try to lock everything down a little bit here. I thought about moving the wrestle guy forward to threaten the ball, but then I thought he'll just get fucking blitzed down. So what's the fucking point? So yeah, made made a three plus cheeky three plus there. Not that it mattered too much. Any blitzes again, the worst player. I do like, you know, getting your worst player blitz. I think that's an important thing, isn't it? I was able to blitz his best player a few times. Um, and I was he was mostly only able to blitz my worst player. So I like I'm thinking obviously he's making it look like he wants to pass the ward answer. But I'm thinking this guy's a bigger threat. And I can't really deal with both. Um and obviously just keeps it back. And the key move that I think is is my misplay in overtime is he gets an irrelevant Kaz there at the end. I think my misplay of overtime was I moved him forward to to, th to threaten. One, two, three, four. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. I could have made a GFI and then got tackle and two players on him. So looking back, I did this so that you know he had to go for the score next turn, because if he doesn't, he just loses because he gets mighty blow tackle blitzed and loses the ball and it's game over, isn't it? Basically. But maybe what I should have done was just GFI there because he, he was kind. You know, it's just horrible. That's the thing against our, against. You know the fact that he's um. He could have just blitzed him. Like I don't. I don't know. I felt like that was a good idea, but then I was like, maybe I should have just saved it till the end and GFI'd here. The fact that he, if he does roll a one, um, or like fails a block or whatever. I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't have done it. 
I think that was probably a misplay there. Get a Kaz there again at the end of the match when it doesn't matter. Happy days. Obviously still a guy off, which is a one less scoring threat. But, I mean, this isn't much of anything, is it? It's super easy for him to clear a path. Block him, block him, and score. So, I, at this point, this was the point where I really regretted pressing pressing him to score. Because if I'd, if I'd moved here, he would have had to try to score with the war dancer rather than the catcher. Still relatively easy for him, though, isn't it? Relatively easy touchdown. Though, actually, he needs a power. He does need a power here. If he got a push, um, you know, there's some tackle there. I don't like that he does the pass before the blitz because this pretty much commits him to doing something. Um, but, yeah, it would been huge if my tackle guy had been there instead of nowhere. And if he gets the power, he doesn't get the push of the boat down. So now it's just uh, easy. Push a boat down there would have been horrible for him. But he just does all that. Makes a GFI. Makes another one. And there you go. So, yeah, I think that was a... I think... there was. I made a few misplays. Um... You know, especially with that tackler, not not chief, not not making the goal for it with that tackler. I think that was a that was pretty much a misplay, and um, probably when I had the ball on my armor four movement four guy, I probably should have just handed it off that turn. But um, I think I played pretty well. I think I think I played better than he did um, because I just don't like his strategy of scoring in two turns. I think it should bite him in the ass more than it does. Uh, but obviously most people he plays are on ladder and therefore not very good at Blood Bowl. Um, but yeah, 41 blocks each is crazy, isn't it? So like, actually 18 arm armor breaks out of 41 blocks is actually pretty pretty decent, to be honest. But um, there you go. It is what it is. The dream is the dream is dead. I made a lot of I made a lot of stuns. Um, but you know. He he doesn't a stun doesn't affect him that much. You need to you need to take out the key players, don't you? That's the thing. And I just could not take out that one turner before he before he scored his one turn. And um I think if he had made if I'd if he didn't have the movement nine guy, I think he would have really struggled to score his one turner with the setup that I had. Um but as it was obviously he only needed one push and um it was a bit crap. So there you go. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and stay fantastic.